Hello and welcome to this Akiket tutorial for students. In this video, we will be exploring the process of modeling a bus shelter project using Akiket. Akiket is an essential tool for architecture students who want to bring their designs to life. It allows you to create 3D models, generate floor plans and manage project documentation all in one place. In this tutorial, we will be demonstrating how to use Akiket to design a functional and visually appealing bus shelter. We will be covering various tools and techniques that will help you create your own designs as well as best practices for creating sustainable and accessible structures. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of Arcade's capabilities and how to apply them to your own design projects. Let's get started. Okay, let's bring in the image that we're going to reference the project with. I will just drag and place it in the Arcade canvas here. And then let me move it aside here then uh, the second step is to analyze these elements of the structure we have these two columns that are on 2.9 uh, meters high and then we have the canopy which is around four meters uh, wide, uh, long and 1.6 meters wide and then we also have the advertising area the, the banner which is 1.8 by 1.3 and then the seating area that is roughly 1.7 wider so this is how we are going to construct this we're going to start first by the main structure which is the two columns and then we're going to do the canopy and then we do the seating area then later on um, produce the advertising uh, uh, banner okay so the columns are going to be made of uh, a steel if i'm looking at this image so what i'm gonna do i'll go to design tool palettes and then activate the column tool uh, make sure it's active and then open its settings uh, let me just drag this so that you can see the column of the image and then what we need to do here is to say it's around 220 if i'm not mistaken the size of it yes it's 220 I think it's 220 by 220 so i'll go back to the settings and then make sure here we set the same measurement and the height is 2.9 we're not going to link it i'm going to unlink it and then so that i can set the height manually i would say 2. Point, yeah 2.950 and then we're good to go i think we need to change the material to res resemble what we see here I have to set this to be a steel i'll say stainless steel or steel structural either way and then i can come here and override the surfaces by using a, a surface for a metal finish i can go for an aluminium and then make sure they are linked surfaces to apply for all the sides and then hit ok to apply the changes from here what you need to do is to place a column okay it looks tiny but uh, that's the thing let's see the width uh, the total width of the structure is four meters so what I'm gonna do I'm going to take this column and control shift D to duplicate it put it aside here and then I'm gonna move this by four meters okay I'm not sure I'm not pretty sure the distance between this column is 4 meters it's 4.4 so i can i can move it back to this column on top of it and then i can use this say 4 meters let's measure by hitting m in your keyboard to activate the measure tool it's not accurate so what i'll do i'll use a, a line tool that will be four meters you can also use a guide if you want a guide tool you can come here and then say create a guideline or you say alt l then you can just draw a guide of of four meters something like this and then you can align your columns like that i can delete the lines all right if you want to delete this guideline as well you have to come here and then say remove all guides it will disappear okay so we have two columns now that are ready but our columns has a base as you can see a base plate we can 
use either use a slab for this or we utilize the same columns let me just select all the columns and then i'm going to control shift d and pick this point and then place it again on the same origin so that i can come and uh, open its settings let's make the plate 500 wide and then the height of it is going to be it's small i think maybe it's a, it's a height of a the thickness of the metal or sheet of metal is it won't be more than 10 millimeters so i'll just hit 10 now we have a base of our our columns something like that so if we check on 3d this is what we have all right so let's go back i would select these two and then group them i like grouping elements because it makes my work easier to manage and organize the elements within a file but i want to see the columns on top of the base plate so what i would do i would suspend groups and then make sure i select both two columns sorry and then uh, right click let's display order and bring it to front so that they can be visible on a plain view i think i need to centralize this into the space like here all right and then uh, let's move on to the canopy now i don't have a clear view for this element on top of the column but i would suspect it is the same size for as as for the columns that beam go all the way to that side let me just do it i would uh, go back to the design tool palette and then this time i'm going to use a beam tool open its settings what i need to do is to use the same um dimensions for the one we used for our columns and then i can uh, come here under segment to change the material to a steel 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 and then we can override the surfaces make sure they they are all linked so that you can change once so i'm gonna type metal aluminium then hit ok we can come here and draw our beam like that but it has to go all the way to the end right click and hit ok i can come this side select the beam and pick this point to stretch it to the edge of the the column and then if we check on 3d let's see that this is basically what we've created as i think is pretty much closer to what we see on the image here this 300 it's for yeah no it's for this um item which is uh, a number of that i think let's quickly create that i see there has the, it has this um connection i think it's still rot and then this is uh something else so let's quickly do that this we can use um, the same column. Mm, I can use the same column. I will just pick a beam. Let's just use the beam. I'm going to control shift D to move a copy to here. And then I'm going to stretch this by the distance. Okay, we need to confirm the distance first. It's around 300. It's 300 by 300. So I'm going to stretch this column and make it 300. Okay. And then uh, we have the distance between the number and this which is made by this we can use the beam uh, for for this item let's uh, move this by 100 and then i'm going to uh, duplicate that and stretch it all the way to to this beam and then this instead of having it like this i'm going to change the profile to a circular beam and then open its settings let's change the diameter of this uh beam to be maybe is it 50 i think it's close to i think it's close to what we see on the image let's see on 3d yeah i think it's close so i need to drop this but uh to drop the um the this rod to the center of to the center of uh the beam if you don't see your guides and it has to give to give me the midpoint of of this distance so if you don't see it you go back here under the guidelines 
and then make sure under snap points the snap points are active this can in this case are not active if you activate it and then if you come here it will show me the center point so now i can easily drag this to there which is perfect and then i can group these two elements then uh, let's go back to the ground and make sure they are sitting right on the edge of the column instead of the base plate supposed to be oh, let me just control d to put it here all right so something like that so i'm not sure with the thickness of it let's confirm with the image and see what's the thickness yeah it looks pretty slim um i think it can be around 100 let's make the thickness of this to be I'm going to unlink the sides no. and then make sure this is uh, maybe 60. Oh, sorry. Why did I? Let me cancel. Go back. Make this 60. No, that's not the one. 220 is supposed to be this one. Yeah, I think on the preview looks great. The proportion it looks something that we want let me confirm with the image i'm not sure this is flashing with that let's confirm on the, the 3d something like that okay i think i can uh, increase the thickness of this a bit let's make it i think 80 let's make it 80 yeah i think uh, this way it looks great let's confirm with the image the height is supposed to be right on the i think it's about 2.5 the height of it is 2.5 let's select this um elevation right click and open with current view settings so what we need to do is to draw a guideline i'll say alt sorry um alt l and draw a guideline of uh, 2.5 here then we know that that's the distance of this to here okay let's confirm with the image again 2.5 i think 2.5 is right on the edge of that let's go back to the elevation and address that let me move it here okay let's i think it's pretty pretty much um what we want let's go back and put a number a number when i use a 3d text to place it so i'm going to go here under object activate the object settings and type in here 3d text 26 and then come under 3d text um, settings what you need to do is just to give it a number I don't know why it's not two yes let's give it a number and then i can set the font to be a robot western i don't know sure that we can bold it make sure the resolution is on 100 or we can just type 3d make sure it's by 3 detail level is full change the text color to paint ivory then place let's resize it um, i'm gonna select it i'll start by resizing the the width it should be something 15 i think it's fine and then i'll come here on the info box under the height let's make it 300 or oh, maybe 150 something like this and then i'm going to find the midpoint of this element and then i can move this to there i think on elevation let's see it on elevation and here it is drag it to its point like that okay so if we confirm that on on the image it's supposed to be flashing with the item there so what i need to do is um, 
reduce the thickness to be that and then push it to the inside push it to the inside you can push it almost to flush with it but i'll just leave a small amount of it to be to protrude like that and then if we check on 3d that's what you have you can also uh, perform the solid element operation to subtract um, this number from the main element but in this case i don't think it's necessary to do because it's just um, perfectly positioned so i'll go back to the ground let's move on into the next item which is uh, the canopy now canopy sits around 2.5 height and it's around 4 meters by 1.6 this day i would use beams for the framing of the canopy and then i can use a slab to fill in the um this to put a shade so let's do that i think like i said it's 1.6 i'll start by doing the let's start by doing the, the the slab to fill in that because it will give us the dimensions for the whole element so i'll pick the slab too make sure you change the structure to a basic and then set this to be glass I believe it's a glass and then uh, what i need to do is to change the height of the slab or the thickness of the slab to let me just use 50 for now and then i'm going to pick this point and uh, i'm going to use the geometry method of a rectangular so that i can draw the width the width is supposed to be a four meters right and then here is supposed to be 1.5 which is which is that all right so what we need to do is to place the beams now so i'll pick this beam already that we have let's pick its parameters and then if you come here let's check the height of this beam it's around 130 so I'll open the settings set the height and the width to be 130 okay then hit okay to apply the changes we're now you could use the different ways of playing. The fastest way is to press and hold the spacebar key in your keyboard to activate magic wand. And then you can place on the slab like that. Alright. And uh, I think we would need to position. Let's get rid of this element. Okay. And suspend group. And then this member, we're going to delete it because it is supposed to be sitting right on the columns. So also this sides, the sides beams should be flushing with the with the columns like that. I'll do the same to the to the other side as well. And uh, I'll select all of them. Make sure you to intersect to clean up the corners or the joints. And then if we check on 3D, that's what we have. And this supposed to be let's suspend the group. This supposed to be on a height of uh, 2.5 so i'm going to change it currently it's at zero because it's, it's been set to be on the, the the upper story i'm going to set it to ground so that i can key in the height for it to be 2.5 okay so let's confirm with the image again and see that are we in the right track but i could see now the uh the is 2.5 but in our case the the number is a little bit high it's a little bit high it has to be right on the right on the line of the this canopy beam so i would go back to the elevation let's select that and drag by this midpoint and place it there i think this way it makes a lot of sense let's confirm again with the image yeah i think it makes a lot of sense okay and then uh, we need to bring the slab up to 2.5 height as well something like that we can edit the slab and make sure to override the surface to just find a tinted glass maybe glass mirror glass satin yes let's just use clock certain then hit ok it looks great so one thing we need to do is to make sure our glass it sits right in the internal edge of our beam so i'll pick this 
so edge and then use the offset edge to offset it to the inside of the beam for both sides i'll just do it for for all the sides like that except that one that is on the edge let's see again i think we still have a beam here this beam also continues all the way to there so i will um, select this one okay a suspend group let's select this one and i would control shift m to mirror a copy by using the midpoint of this beam to the other side but it has to flash with the column so i would move it by this edge right to the column there and then uh, let me select this three beams and make sure i'm cleaning up these joints by intersect perfect if you check on 3d that's what we have it looks great already and then uh let's move on to the next item which is the the sitting the sitting also we have this three post and uh, we have the sitting bench and uh, these panels i don't know these panels can be made of aluminum or or plastic either way so the diameter of this um uh, post are 100 uh, millimeters um and um this is around three five three five six and the total width of the whole thing is 1.75 so let's do that i'll start with the bench first the bench i'll use a slab i can come here and pick uh, let's pick parameters of the slab and then change the material to uh, steel all right and then open its settings let's change also the surfaces to be metal aluminium okay and then the height i think 50 let's leave it for now and then the offset height is going to be the height of a chair which is uh use 450 450 will be fine and then hit enter or okay to apply the changes so i'll come here let's confirm the dimensions first it's around 356 by 77 1.750 so i'll come here i'll draw using a construction method of a, a rectangle let's draw the length will be 1750 and then the width by clicking the downward arrow to access the dim the, the vertical dimension which is around 356 hit enter that's the dimension of our bench and then i'll use the midpoint of this to move it on the midpoint of the structure like that so if we check on 3d we have this little kind of a thing so let's go back to the image and then to do the the post we have three posts of a diameter of 100 millimeters so in this case i'm going to use a beam sorry a column i'll pick the parameters of this column or i'll just control shift d to make a copy of this column and then place it here let's set the structure of it to a circle and then open its settings to change the diameter of the circle to 100 and then hit enter to apply the changes so we can mirror a copy to the other side or just control shift d and then pick the center point to place it uh, on the other side if we check on 3d that's basically what you have let's confirm the height of this post they're supposed to be around uh, um, 2.5 so what i'll do i'll select them and then make sure they are 2.5 height check on 3d perfect they look great i'm not sure with the position of it on the bench i think they are supposed to be flashing with the edge of the bench of the seat so let's confirm that on 3d so i'll come here on the ground floor and then see but i think what we did is the correct thing okay so let's just place the third uh, post on the center of the seating so i'll select one of this control shift let's find the midpoint which is this and then control shift d to carry a copy to there so now we have a complete of a three post so we're left with to be doing the panels in between um this three post we can confirm that on 3d we have one two three four panels that uh runs along the height of the the post by the way the post at the top here they have um a recess of 
or uh, they've reduced the size so i think we need to also pro uh, create this detail so to create that detail what i'll do i'll select all the the columns make sure they are grouped and then i'll control shift d and then i'll use control shift d to copy with the same point and then place it there so this will give me a platform to say okay um i want this uh let's suspend group let's pick one and then suspend group i want this to be at a height of maybe uh two meters or 2.2 uh, let's make it two meters let's make it two meters okay and then the remaining these ones they're gonna be um i can just use manually to stretch the height but to access the stretched tool you need to suspend group or to ungroup let's click on that and then we can um, access the stretch height to there okay and then i'll open its settings and change the diameter to half this i'm gonna put it at 50 millimeters diameter or 50 50s what do you think is it too thin maybe 60 yeah 60 is perfect and then i'll make sure the seat they sit right on the edge of i think they're supposed to be right underside of this beam so what i'll do i'll select this and stretch them to the underside of the beam and then make sure they are positioned uh, back so i'll go back here let's select all of them make sure you you group them all by control d i mean control g or you can come here under edit grouping and then group control g the shortcut so let's go back to the plan view and then they're supposed to be sitting right on the other side i'm gonna make sure they are on the edge like this right and then let's move also our bench to the center of the the columns so on 3d you would find something like that okay you could decide to align it right on the on the center of the underside of, of your beam but uh, for the sake of this demonstration let's just leave it the way it is okay so let's move on and create the panels now the panels you can uh, try use different um, method as well you can use this elevation and then you sketch the panels here and uh, to use a morph tool to create that i don't like to use morph tool i only use the morph tool where necessary where i don't have a choice where i there is no other alternatives to create a, a, an object that's the only way i'm using morph but in this case there are a lot of ways to achieve this i can also use this slab by control shift d move it here and then if we go back you would find um, the height of this supposed to be how much? I think 350. The height of this 350. And then we go back to the elevation. Let's set this slab height to be 350. Boom. You already have the panel. So I would move it at the top here. And then what I would do is to change the thickness on the floor plane. The thickness I'm going to change it manually because it's not parametric. So I'll select that and then stretch it from the edge by offsetting edge to there you have to be sure with or certain with the with the thickness so i'll draw a guideline by alt l alt l in your keyboard what's wrong with my guide okay that I, let me make sure they are active here and then i can alt l let's make sure um this becomes um a panel of a thickness of uh, 200 i mean 20 thickness okay, let's, go for, let's go for 10 millimeters thickness and then we can select our slab move it there stretch to that okay it has to be on the center of the column so i would pick it right on the mid center and then move it to the midpoint so that you can have something like this on your 3d let's see here i don't know why they are overlapping they are overlapping here let's fix that i think the main one should be right 
okay this shouldn't be on the midpoint i'll just flush it there like that or even if it's overlapping it's because we can raise it because if you look at the image let's confirm on the image they are there is a distance between the the seating and that i think this is around um five millimeters so i'll come here on elevation we can set this up by five millimeters let's say uh, or 10 now let's make 20 let's add 20 yes, something like that. it looks okay for the sake of this video i'm gonna make it 30 30 millimeters something like this and then how many are they they are there are four color uh, panels i think the space around this could be a 250 so let's come here under elevation i'm going to draw a guideline of the spacing of this panel so i'll hit alt l sorry alt alt l and then let's just draw a 250 uh, distance i think 250 is huge let's reduce it to maybe 150 or 100 let's just make it 100 okay and then from here i'll select the panel and then click on one of the points let's multiply it and then i'm gonna use increment and spread under drag then hit okay so from here i'll pick it from this edge and then i would uh, reference with this uh, 100 guideline and then i can now run three copies right so that means we have uh, they are encroaching to this columns the thin columns so let's confirm that on 3d is it that the case no it's not i think the height of this has to reduce because in my case here it looks huge it looks huge i can select let me undo and then change the height of this to 250 then set it to height of uh, 790 that will be what 700 let's move it up by 30 something like that and then i can bring my guideline okay let's just delete it because it didn't work i can alt l to draw another guideline of uh, 150 okay let's just make 100 Let's make it 100 and then from here pick one of the points and then multiply um, increment with spread and then i'll pick it from this base and then reference it from here run a multiple copy of three there we go let's take advantage and then group advantage of the selection and then group unfortunately on arcade cannot group on elevation so i have to go to 3d and then uh, let's select all these elements hit ctrl g to group them perfect we have this now a sitting area for our bus shelter so if you go back and confirm with the, the 3d you'd find there is this installation of fixing um uh, iron monger or fixing elements between the column and the panel to achieve that we can still use um let's see what we can use we can use the the morph or still use the slab but let's go for morph this time around because i can see we have to round it on the edges and uh, achieve that but uh, let's go to the elevation and uh, sketch the the profile i'll go to documents tools and then bring in polyline tool let's use the construction method of a rectangular and then i'm gonna sketch it from here make something around 60 by 40. yeah i think it looks okay from here i can fillet this edge uh, fillet this corner by let's make it 20. Oh, 20 is too much make it 10 for both sides like that all right 
so we can now pick a, a move tool under design tool palette let's activate our move tool and then change this to be um, let's go for stainless steel and we can override the paint as well over the surface to be a metal aluminium and then hit ok from here oh what am i changing i'm only changing the line properties okay okay no it's fine so to apply it to the line i would use a space bar and hold to activate the magic wand and then hover the cursor all above the line and then click on the line there we go we have it now applied we can confirm it on the 3d but move it to sit on the location of your elevation marker on the three on the floor plane so you see where it is it's somewhere here because uh, on floor plane it's going to be located on this line of your elevation so if i had to move back this elevation you have to see it which is this part all right in case you may wondering but look at guys i'm doing a move on an elevation and then it's not showing on 3d that is the problem i think you can fix it easily like that so from here i can select the surface of this move to activate the push and pull command and then i can use that to be let's make it 20 okay and then go back let's carry it back to the position by the midpoint i'm gonna move it to the position okay which is here i'm gonna make it sit on the, on between on the middle of the column sorry if you check on 3d let's fit in the window so that is how it's being assembled okay so now i can run multiple copies on the elevation side for all the okay i can get rid of this line too let's right click right click after selection of that element i'm going to use a uh, move uh, drag multiple copies command guys i want i get to add a shortcut for this command because it's one of the most useful command in ArchiCAD, but it doesn't have a shortcut so you could see the process of coming here it's long so i needs to improve on the next version it has to be uh, added a shortcut look at this all the commands here have shortcut only except the multiple copies both for drag and rotate so i'll just drag multiple copies and then i'll pick this point a corner the base corner for the panel and then i can quickly place the element like that okay hit cancel and then once you cancel it will select all the elements but like i said or you cannot group Archicad on elevations so what i need to do is come back here under elevation and under 3d then select all this and make it a group rather i'll make it a let's right click and then make it under boolean operation and then union so that it can be just one unit let's make the copy to the other side so i'll go to the is it a, i do it on a floor plane or an elevation either way let's make it on a floor plane so i'll select that Control shift m i think i've used this column as a midpoint okay if you check on 3d it's placed so if you look at our image even on the side it's been applied so i would come here and then uh, let's Control shift d to carry a copy of this from this point to this point and then i'll Control shift m to mirror a copy by using the center point of this column to copy this to the other side of the column just like that and then boom you have your things um, applied here i can select all of them and then make a group by Control g right okay so it looks great uh, that's basically what we have to do so let's go back to the image again and see and move on to the next item which is um, the the advertising uh, panel so this uh, is going to be kind of a bit challenging because you could see the edges here are rounded so to achieve this you have to come up with a pragmatic way of uh, doing it okay let's we can use a slab 
to start by framing up this in a later on subject. Let's do that. I'm just showing you different ways of uh, assembling or creating objects in ArchiCAD. So what I'll do, I will uh, activate the slab tool and then uh, come here on the image and then let's set the height of the slab to 1.8 as you could see it's 1.8 height item here and then I'm not sure where the width of this I think it should be the same as the canopy I'll make it uh, okay let's come here under settings and then make it I'll make it the same amount which is uh, 1 130 All right so I'll hit OK let's apply the slab here we could use a slab or beam already okay let's, let me just do this uh, so that you can see uh, a quick way i'll manipulate this slab i mean this uh, beam let's manipulate this beam um, a suspended group to or uh, ungrouped to select it separately and then let's control shift d to carry a copy from here maybe let's say the offset height of the base offset of this element is relatively closer to or same as the bench which is 450 so i can copy that 450 oh sorry about that copy that 450 and then place it on the beam right and then we can key in the height of the element which is 1.8 so come here under its settings and then the height is going to be this one let's make it uh 1.8 okay it becomes that and then if you hit ok oh because uh, um the beam the reference line of the beam is on the top so that means whatever changes that you make on the height is going to go on the negative side to change this um i think you go here under the the elements under the settings i know there's a there's a feature where you can set this same applies to the slab um, there's where you choose it should the reference line should be on the underside where is it uh, uh, guys I wanted to show you this it doesn't show uh, okay um, anyway I would uh, I'll come back if I find that let me come back I don't, I don't want to waste time on this let's just hit OK and then what we'll do we we'll just do it manually i'll control d to move it to here and then uh, um i think we left with the issue of the the, the 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 width of it so if we go back to the image and then check what is the width which is 3 1.3 so i'll come here and then open in settings let's pick this point and then i'll use the stretch length the length should be 1.3 so now we have a 1.3 panel and let's go back to the image again and see the connection it's just flashing i think uh, we have this fixing a mechanism here for the two with a gap of maybe roughly 100 so i'll try to mimic that let's go back to the plan and then uh, let's select our our advertising banner move it here around 100 check on 3d and see if that effect will be enough okay make it 150 or add another 50 on top let's see yeah i think it's perfect yes perfect let's fix let's put the fixing um mechanism so i'll go back to the plane view and then i'll manipulate sorry about that let's manipulate this beam as well i mean this yeah beam as well and then i'll control d Control Shift D to carry a copy and place it here, and then I'll stretch that to the edge. Oh, I cannot find the edge. Okay, I just want to stretch it all over to there, and then I'll change the measurements of that to be just a fixing issue. The height is going to change as well. It's going to be maybe let's make it two hundred. Uh, this is going to be. Um, 60 I think also 200 is big make it 100 okay so it becomes this let's check on 3d we have uh, that and uh, I can drop it a bit by let's make it 
or maybe 1.9 something like that and then I can control shift D to carry a copy going all the way down there and then this will be um, I want to make I want to make it equal let's just move it right away to this and then I can hit M to measure the distance from here to the top which is 350 and then I'm gonna use that to add on this oh, sorry like I said the, because the reference line is on the top if you change the base offset it's gonna go down instead of going up so I would find that feature where you can turn on the, the reference line if you know it let's, let me know in the comment section how to change the reference line of an element both for your wall slabs and beams they do work the same um, um, of that so I'll move it manually going up right like that by 350 so now I have I have that in place okay even though it looks awkward I can increase the height of this two to be maybe 150 yeah something like that okay it's perfect so if you go back to the image and then you see that advertising board um, it has a depth on it which is this part and then it has a frame or oh, sorry a picture on it framed as well so um for this to achieve what i need to do is uh what i can do is um I come here on 3d let's select this right click but before we convert this into a morph we need to have a separate copy in case we want to come back and re-edit it so what i'll do i'll select that and then Control shift uh, d i'll move this to a copy to there and so that when i right click and convert this to, into a morph i now have a copy that i can if i've messed up <laughs> if i mess up this i now have a copy that i can come back and uh, instead of creating everything from scratch so now this is a morph what we are trying to do here oh sorry but what we're trying to do here is to punch in the hole where the image or the advertising um, media will be so i'm gonna use a elevation to achieve this so let's open that elevation right click on it and then open with current view settings so once we have that and uh, i will have to draw a, another morph to cut off this so let's do that so draw another morph from here let's just draw a just a, rect a rectangular morph a plane like, like that and then we can select that plane let's offset the all edges by 120 guys i have a cough so you'd see my videos my recent videos have some a little bit of a hiccup because i had to take a break and it cleared out so yeah that's the situation i'm in right now so i uh, have to check on 3d but like i said that element if you place a morph it will be positioned on the line on the position of uh, your elevation so what i need to do is to maybe move this elevation a little bit back or and then I can select that let's bring it closer to to the scene here and then once we have it let's check first before we we subtract it's just a straight corner yes that's what I, what, what I wanted to confirm so I can now take this and then pull by push pull it will pierce through the the main um, item okay but before I I pierce through but it's fine i can do it later i want i was thinking to round edges first before i i apply a hole on it so to apply a hole i can select this and then right click come here under boolean operation let's subtract and then i'll select the element that i want to subtract uh, uh whatever the element that i want to subtract using it which is the operator i'll click on that it to say non-solid elements Oh, they are all solids what are you talking about and then hit ok they are all solids I don't know why it's refusing 
okay if it doesn't work i can select this right click and bring solid element operation in solid element operation this will be a target and then that this will be an operator i will just use operation of a subtraction let's hit execute from here because uh, this is a live operation we cannot um if we hide this so you would it will depend on hiding this i don't want to hide this i want to have a, a permanent subtraction what i'll do i'll select this element right click and then convert it into a move by so doing i'll hit ok by so doing it to keep the whole permanent so in this case even if you delete this you still maintain your whole that's what i wanted to achieve and then from here i can now round edges as you can see on the image the edges are being rounded so i'm going to say select that round or fillet chamfer edges i'll say apply all edges this is i don't think it will work the i was hesitant uh, initially um to cut a hole before i round edges now i know i see what i meant so even i say let's round edges by 20 and then apply all edges it will apply even on the hole i didn't want to apply on the hole because if you look at on the 3d on the image it's just straight so what we need to do first is to undo let's undo undo okay we have a live operation right and then i can first round edges to round edges you need to pick one of the edges like that and then use this fillet or chamfer let's use 20 radius is fine 20 millimeters radius is fine and then i'll make sure i apply to all like that let me see yeah i think it's more or less the same okay that's when i can now right click and convert this into a move to keep the whole permanent all right so i can now delete this element the this will be the results of which this is perfect what i wanted okay so from here we need to place uh, the the way we are gonna put the image or do the image let's see the image itself has been it has this uh black frame in it we need to produce the black frame first so to do that i can go back to this elevation and uh let's say pick the morph tool and then draw from the inside box a morph box like that and then what i'm going to do i'm going to pick this again and offset to add a copy i will, I will click on control to add a copy like that and then the frame is going to be maybe 45 okay so that will be the frame i'll come back here under the ground floor what i need to do is to position that relatively relatively closer to the scene so let's move this um elevation marker and then select all of these guys move them to the scene here i think it's supposed to be positioned right or maybe on the edge i don't know let me see first on the image i think there's a bit of a recess here so that's what i want to to achieve let's just make it let's make it um 10 it's fine it's subject to change you can come back and edit that what we need to do here is uh decide what the thickness of uh, this to be let's confirm with this the thickness of the beam was 130 that means this should be around 90 okay should be around 90 what happened okay there is a weird thing happened here guys let me undo undo okay i offset it oh no now i see if what if i pick here okay now i see this is not this one this was not part of the intention guys but clearly i see it gave me a good thing i can uh, offset only the part that i by 20 like that let's see on the side yeah that's the problem so what i'll do i'll delete that and let's make a perfect move we have to make more make uh, separate moves instead of 
um, of setting the edge of the one and add another uh, variety. So what I need to do is just draw this and then draw another move again. And then this time around, select one and then offset all edge. Don't add a copy, just make two moves and then offset the other one. And then if you go back to the ground floor, let's go here under this elevation, move it back, select these two guys, move them here. Oh, we used um, 20, we wanted to move it by 20 instead of just uh, that. I think it was 10, right? Yes. And then check on 3D. I'll start by extruding the, the outer one. Let's offset the outside one. And pick the surface. And then uh, we can use... Um, what, 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 what was the distance? Let's confirm first. Okay, we used 90. Let's pick the surface to activate the page pool. And then key in 90 which is the distance right let's rotate it to the other side so that we can have access to this one and then this we're gonna just we don't bother with the height because we just want it to pierce through the main the main uh, morph and then from here I can right click while this has been selected boolean operations subtract and then you select the ones that remains which is the outer one Okay, let's select this one and change its surfaces under the settings. Override the surfaces to, a, I think, let's go for paint, ivory black. Hit OK to apply the changes. That's what we have. Now we need the picture itself. All right. We need the picture itself. Now I'm certain I can delete this because I don't think I would need it again. Or before I delete it, I can use it as a... I can use it as a picture, but you know what? It's fine. Let's let us let us let it go. Go back to the elevation again. We're going to add now the panel for the picture. This picture, we're going to have pictures to have to display two different, or we're going to have this two different, to display, sorry, two different pictures at the same time. So I'm going to have two morphs to fill in these gaps as well to achieve that. So let's activate the morph tool. Oh, sorry, the morph. And then I'm going to draw a morph on the inside of this like that okay and then let's uh we could leave it just as a plane like that and then let's go back to the ground floor what we need to do is uh, to take that plane of a morph here let's move it to the inside i don't know should i move it in the black the inside or should flash with the black let's just make it flash something like this now we had we have a surface to apply a picture on it. We have to also move it to the other side to display a different picture as well. So I'll pick this one and then Control Shift D to move it a copy from here to there. We have two sides that can display different images. Okay. Let's confirm everything sits. Yeah. Okay right let's move ahead and create an image or a picture to display here i will go to the internet um, and then i'll post this video i'm going to find a v uh, images that i can use for this too and then we'll see how we can place those images here okay okay guys i went and downloaded image from this website it offers free stocks for commercial and individual um, licensing so i just key in the the keyword here and then it gave me the list of all the nice images that I want. So I'll go back to Arcad and load those two images. So what I'll need to do is go to Options menu, Element Attributes. Let's open the Services um, window. In the Services window, I'm gonna come here, and then let's find just one material. Just select one material that has a texture on it because it's important. Let's just pick this one and then hit on New. I'll call this one. Um, commercial or advert how do you spell advert advert one because we have two adverts that we need to uh, put and then hit ok i'll come here under texture um, section let's replace or browse the image and then add 
um, here I'll pick one of this image that I downloaded and then once the image is loaded I think it's between these two yeah these two are the ones that I'm going to use so I can hit OK to reload it to the newly created material okay it will take the dimensions of um, of the of the image as you can see but you can also override that here but I don't think is the correct way of doing it but under here under the origin I will use the no mirroring because I just want them to be um, flat and then once you're done I'll hit OK and then I'm gonna apply this or just select on this element open its settings apply the newly created advert one surface and then hit OK it won't show here on 3d I mean on elevation but you can preview it on on 3d like this so that's basically what you have you have this um, multiplied along the width of this so to um, achieve this let's come let's go back to we want just one image to fill in this area to achieve that let's go back to the surfaces and uh, element attributes and then uh, we select the advert one instead of um, using this i'm going to say let's make sure they've been linked make sure they've been linked okay like that and then we say the height the width should be 970 and automatically to adjust that if you hit ok it should fill up the space okay now it fill up the space is is the question of um, positioning it nicely now how do we position or bring down the image we're going to go to documents and then under creative imaging let's find a feature called align 3d texture so i would say reset it should give me i think i i should select it first instead of just do that. select that plane again go back creative imaging and then align 3d texture set to the origin and then i'm gonna pick this point as the origin so now we have uh, the image filling in our our banner like that looks great eh? so let's do the other side if in case if you didn't get um, the process very well so go back to the options menu and element attributes to open the services and then let's create another advert which is going to be advert 2 i'll duplicate this one and then just name it 2 and then hit ok let's replace the image by browsing on the folder i already placed the image uh, added the image under the libraries i have to select it and then hit ok let's just use the same dimensions and then okay once we loaded it let's apply it to the surface open the surface and uh, override the surface to advert to hit okay there we go we need to resize or reposition our image go to options sorry documents and then creative imaging let's find align 3d text and set the origin to the origin will be this corner then we would have image filling in our banner okay that's brilliant it looks great it looks great okay all right i have the bonus for you the bonus is to create um this let me just put it here the bonus is to create uh, this uh, dustbin with an ad uh, part as well with an advert part as well so that will be on the side that will be positioned on the side of our our bus shelter so let's cancel this and then drag this image to into our architect let's go oh, so make sure it's on the floor plane you can only place the image on floor plans and other views instead of 3d view so let's just drag and place it there and then uh, bring it somewhere here what we need to do is uh we're gonna use this two members as columns and then this will be beams so it's going to be the same height of our our bus shelter so what i'll do i'll select that image i mean column and drag a copy to here and then i'll assume this distance is around uh let me see maybe 1.6 1.5 so what i'll do i'll make a copy of this from here going 
about the distance of 1.5 okay i think this should give us 1.5 let's reduce it by 220 let's see yeah it's fine okay and then if you look at the image this is going to be uh, thinner than the main post for or the main columns for for our bus shell so what i'll do i'll come here select both of them open in settings instead of having uh, this linked i'm going to uncheck this so that i can define this as 100 to have that hit okay there we go now what we need to do is um, add a beam on top a beam uh, in the middle and then a beam down uh, below so i'll select this beam Control shift d to carry a copy to here and then let's uh, stretch the beam by using a stretch tool from this point to the column like that so if we check on 3d we have this there. but the beam has to be the size of this guys which is 2.5 i'm gonna make the offset 2.5 but the ground i mean the home story should be the ground and then let's set this to 2.5 something like that and then this will be 2.5 height okay and then uh, uh, we need to change the thickness of it to be 100 so i will uncheck that or oh, uncheck that and then make it 100 no 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 i think it's the other way around this is supposed to be 100 okay that's great so if we look at on 3d this is when then i'm gonna move a copy to down here move another copy right in between here okay it's going to be around 1.4 but if you look at the image uh, these ones they are thinner these two they are thinner than the main one so what i would do go back to the 3d and then select both of them and set this to be 70 i think 70 is still significant let's make it 50 okay okay great so now is the time to do the dust bins so if you look at to do the bins this is going to be a challenge uh, because uh, okay we're going to use a morph to create this uh, bins uh, bin let's use a morph uh, let's do it i'll pick okay let's instead of morph let's start with a slab first i'll draw a slab from this point to the F slab of uh, this beam should be around 500 by 450 this would be 590 okay let me say 500 by 400 okay i can move i can stretch this by 50 something like this and then move it on the center like that the height of the beam should be okay it's gonna sit on zero the height of the beam i think i make it 600 so if we check on 3d okay the, refer the reference line issue that i spoken about so i can just say 600 here or maybe say 700 to sit on top of this yeah but on the image the the beans looks um the height looks significant so I'll go back here make it uh 800 so also make it here 800 oh, oh i can just move it manually like that all right okay so i'm gonna make a copy to the other side just mirror a copy Control shift m to mirror a copy to this side all right there has to be a space between i'll move it the side to 20 and then move the side by also 20. okay so that we can have something like that those are the beans uh, we have we need to create a hole where the garbage will be thrown uh, as you can see on this one so to achieve that i can pick 
this slab and then offset all edge add a copy by hitting control in your keyboard and then i'm gonna make it uh, maybe 30. all right do the same to this one add a copy and make it 30 but because they're gonna use it to curve so i'm going to select the inside ones and then move it up let's move them up from this point by by 30 as well okay so that we can uh, right click and then connect to bring solid element operation we want to select this as a operator these two so they are already added as a target but let's add them as an operator the target will be the outside which is the main beam and then we're going to use subtraction once we've subtracted we need to kill in the life operation so i'm going to select this two right click and convert it to move and then hit ok so if we select these two inside and then delete we have your beans um, already there so it's a matter of rotating them let's use the elevation side and then uh, select all the beans and then i will rotate it from the center or from the midpoint to there check on 3d we just rotated one okay to let's group them or match them make them one i'll union them from the boolean operation and then go back to the elevation let's rotate again this by maybe 12 percent 12 degrees something like that okay it looks great so it's the time now to do the the um the adverse part with already um process we covered so i think that will be enough for you to comprehend alone so i'll just open this elevation and uh let's find this view and then fill in with the what i'm gonna fill in with the a move tool here like that i don't i don't know this one it doesn't have a frame oh, it, it does have a frame inside a black frame so let's do the same i'm gonna again add another morph and then this one i'm going to offset all the edge by i used to what by 30. that one i used 45. just use 45. okay and then go back to the ground and uh, let's find those elements I, i'm gonna move the elevation marker and then move these elements to the to the scene place them here and then move them move them in by 10 millimeters and then if we check on 3d let's zoom in here we're gonna start by um, extruding the inside one so this should be 90 going out and then the inside one is going to be used to pierce through like that but I could make a copy before I pierce through because I'm gonna lost it. I'm gonna lose it. So let's just uh, make a copy with the same point, and then we can pierce through that. Right click, um, a boolean operation. Let's subtract. Make sure you select the remaining um, uh, morph. All right. And then I can come here, open the settings, make it black. Paint ivory something like that okay it looks great already so now i can apply my pictures on this let's apply advert to and uh, we need to position it nicely what i'll do i'll say go to documents creative imaging align 3d text set origin to be this corner all right but it still look it cuts here but you get what i mean so it means to format your picture your image before you place it here but that's basically what i wanted to share with you guys and uh you can change the black uh, override to a simplified to appreciate this uh nicely like that okay Thank you once again uh, make sure you to share subscribe if you haven't uh, already make sure to share this video with the ones that you think they'll benefit from it and make sure to check 
the file from our patreon membership the link is in the description and make sure to visit our beam store where we share all the resources that can optimize and speed up your workflow or everything that we use for our videos everything is on the link in the description um, section so i'll see you in the next video bye bye